If you are in the market to get a new SD card or SD card reader, you may have come across quite a few different specifications and it can be confusing. Well, confuse no more. In this video, we'll go over what you need to know about SD cards, what is UHS-1, what is UHS-2, and how do they compare to each other. Hello everyone, it's Mike from Sabrent, and here on Sabrent, we talk and make tech. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated for any future videos. From DSLR cameras to photography drones, SD cards have become the staple storage solution. SD cards can offer large storage in a small form factor. SD card stands for Secure Digital Card and is a type of non-volatile storage. This means that it can retain the information stored on it even after the power has been removed, which makes them an excellent choice for a lot of applications. The SD card standard was developed by the SD Association in 1999. The SD Association is a combined effort by many famous memory card manufacturers of the time, like SanDisk, Panasonic, and Toshiba. The SD card has been with us for two decades, and initially they had speeds of up to 12.5 megabytes per second, but then was superseded by high-speed SD cards with speeds of up to 25 megabytes per second. The Ultra High Speed or UHS bus interface was released by the SD Association to replace the high-speed SD card standard. The UHS bus interface increased how much data could be stored and increased the potential transfer speeds from an SD card and it was needed as the high demand for high speed storage was fast growing. The UHS specifications currently have two mainstream versions which is UHS-1 and UHS-2. The third is UHS-3, but that hasn't quite reached mainstream yet. UHS-1 was the first version of the UHS standard. It supported transfer speeds of up to 104 megabytes per second and provided these speeds with just using one row of pins. UHS-1 can support storage sizes of up to two terabytes with SDXE category of cards. This card was backwards compatible with older standards of SD cards, but in order to take advantage of these higher speeds, you would have to use a UHS-1 card reader. UHS-2 was first introduced in 2011. This offered much faster data transfer speeds than UHS-1 by using two lanes for data transfer via two rows of pins. The second row of pins offered the Low Voltage Differential Signaling, or LVDS technology. UHS-2 can do a maximum transfer rate of 312 megabytes per second, which is almost triple the transfer rate that was offered by UHS-1. UHS-2 cards can use two lanes for full data transfer, which is known as full duplex. This is when the card assigns one lane for downstream data transfer and the second lane for upstream data transfer. This means transferring data to and from the host and the SD card, and this type of connection allows for data packets to be transmitted in both directions at the same time. You can also switch to half duplex mode, where the card switches both lanes to the same direction during data transfer to make fast the data transfer speeds. For example, 156 megabytes per second in full duplex can be switched to 312 megabytes per second in half duplex for UHS-2. But just knowing that an SD card is UHS isn't enough. There are further categories and speed classes that you also need to keep in mind. There are further four categories of SD that indicate the connection system and data capacity of the card. SD, or sometimes known as SDSC, stands for Secure Digital Standard Capacity. These cards provide a maximum storage of two gigabytes. SDHC or Secure Digital High Capacity can offer storage spaces between two to 32 gigabytes of storage. SDXC or Secure Digital Extended Capacity gives storage spaces between 32 gigabytes and two terabytes of storage. And lastly, SDUC or SD Ultra Capacity gives storage spaces between two terabytes to 128 terabytes. Yes, that's a lot of room for such a small card, but SDUC is still very, very new. So it's gonna take a lot of time before we see camera manufacturers properly supporting 
this category of card. These categories need to be kept in mind when buying an SD card. Another important thing to keep note of is the UHS speed classes. Currently, UHS has two speed classes, which are one and three, and denote the minimum write speeds. These are marked on the card with a U with either a one or a three inside of it. A one speed class promises a minimum speed of 10 megabytes per second write speed, but if you want a card that can do 4K recording, then you will need a class three card, which promises a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second. Both SDHC UHS-1 and UHS-2 and SDXC UHS-1 and UHS-2 cards come with the class speeds of one and three. You also have four main classes of SD video speeds, which are V10, V30, V60, and V90. Here is a chart of showing you all the differences between each one and showing you what the speed differences each one can operate at. Most cards will be V30, which is great for sort of very small 4K video recording. However, if you shoot anything higher than 100 megabits per second in your camera, then it is usually recommended that you go for at least a V60 card. V90 cards will provide the best and fastest speeds for up to 8K recording. So now that you have a good understanding of what UHS-1 and UHS-2 cards are, and what are some of the specifications that the SD cards come in, it's time to look at what you should be getting for your needs. It is very easy to recommend UHS-2 for practically anything because it gives you that upgrade ability. UHS-2 also offers faster speeds for both read and write. So if you want to handle large amounts of data, then you're gonna need those faster speeds. And it's just totally worth going for UHS-2. UHS-2 also allows you to shoot high bit rate video, which UHS-1 would just struggle with these scenarios. UHS-1 though is a little bit cheaper. So if you're only doing photography, then it might be worth it. However, a lot of new cameras are increasing megapixels, increasing video specifications. So these UHS-1 cards that you end up buying and normally you end up buying several are just gonna be outdated and you're gonna need to upgrade to UHS-2 anyway. So you may as well invest in them now as it is a very good entry point to your photography and videography needs. Also, because UHS-2 is backwards compatible with UHS-1, you can use this card in your device and take advantage of the UHS-2 transfer speeds when offloading to your computer when using a UHS-2 card reader like our Sabrent Thunderbolt travel dock. So if possible, I would recommend you go for the UHS-2 card route as it's worth the extra few bucks because you're gonna be future-proofing your system and you can use those benefits of UHS-2 right away. When it comes to classes of cards, obviously you wanna make sure that it's a class three and I would recommend you go for at least a V60 and if you've got a high performance camera, then I would recommend you go for a V90. But that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then please make sure to hit that like button and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated on all future videos. Anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.